All right, welcome back to LearnStu.com. My name is Patrick Rochon. I'm a professional light painter, and um, we're going for the last segment of our, our portraits. Um, we had some good results so far. We've been having a lot of fun exploring light on the model and behind and around the model. We're having some beautiful emotions coming up and beautiful technique happening. I feel like we're reaching our goal of making everything become one. The light, the model, the makeup, and everything, just the emotion becomes one thing. So um, this has been exciting for all of us. And now we're going to do the final part. I want to introduce you to a few tools um, that um, I talked about yesterday, uh, how to do some very, very slick um, lighting, like a bit like airbrush, you know, doing very beautiful lighting on the uh, model. I have these professional tools that are built for cinema and they're called KinoFlows. This one is the, mic mi the MicroFlow. They don't make those anymore, unfortunately. Um, I have a few left. You might be able to find those secondhand online. Um, what's great about them is they're very thin and they're powerful, even, and they're balanced daylight. Some are balanced tungsten. These are balanced daylight. Um, I use them to do beauty shots and portraits because they make a great, great, great uh, uh, base for lighting. This one is the same one, except I put some tape around it so we hide the source. Uh, this is great for portraits and it just like you can work really close to the face with those. And of course I have all these pre-cut little gel uh, like tubes I can just put it on and have all these different colors happening. So uh, one of my favorite lights to do portraits, uh, my favorite to do the base Definitely, it's a great, great tool. Um, just while we were having a break, I just um, tried a new tool here. I, I use one of those uh, uh, battery-operated glow sticks, the white ones. I took the head off like this, and then I taped it on a flashlight with black tape. I just taped it like this. And, you know, maybe that could be a simple substitute for these lights. And then I put a little some tape here so I can hide it from um, from the camera so I don't make a, tr a trace with it. And this, we'll test it right now and we'll see if it works, if it's a, a good base to, um, to do a portrait. I feel like this could be nice if I went and do a base like this and put some nice lighting and do some nice reflection in the eyes. I feel like this could work and could be a, a cheap solution to the microflow. I know this company, KinoFlow, has uh, one that's bigger, that's about this size and a bit longer. Um, they still make those. Um, they're a bit like, like this kind of neon, this thickness, but just a little bit longer. They don't have a base though. It works with a wire, and that's the downside to it, is you have a wire around. So even though I have a few of those, I only work with one at a time, because in the dark, having wires on the floor, more difficult to manage. So sometimes I'll work with two, but I'm always very, very careful where I put them and where my wires are. I try to avoid the wires and hopefully soon we'll have some good technology that's LED operated and that's very, very small and very powerful like this. If somebody comes up with that idea, I'm definitely one of the first ones on the list. And then we can test this one too. It's a, I found this once, it's a cheap, little neon battery operated. We can try it and see uh, how good it does on the light on, on the face. I'll put a little tape on the side so I'm hiding the source. Like this, making sure. So yeah, I could probably get a similar result with a simple battery like this. I found this one in the store in Japan. I'm sure we can find them online somewhere. Um, but there are alternatives like this. Um, we could build this uh, other ways uh, to build similar things, even with a, a, a cone around the flashlight. If you take a if you take a flashlight like this, and you put a piece of paper and you could block it here and put a little foil here or something reflective. And if you made something like that, you could have probably a similar result where you have a long 
source of light that's thin. So you could probably fix, do that with some, some paper, some foil and things like that. And you'll have your tool to do some beautiful portraits. We'll try some background with the ice light I introduced you to yesterday. These ice light on the website, icelight.com. Uh, amazing lights, no wires. And they're a great background. So we'll try to get very slick and get into some fine details. And be but before that, let's test these sets of, of long uh, neons and, and see what works. So we're going to turn off the light in the studio and we're going to get going. So how are you? Good. Yeah? You ready for the last part? Ready for it. Excellent. And after the last part of the shooting, then we'll go in the computer and we'll do a bit of post-prod, uh, a bit of dodge and burn, and uh, a bit of chart, and a few. I'll tell you a few of the tricks I use. It's, there's n it's nothing new. Everybody has access now through the internet to all this information, but maybe it'll be a good um, direction for you to start with if, if you're a beginner and if you want some, uh, some ideas on how to use uh, the computer to enhance your images in, in uh, post-prod. So, can we turn off the light, please? Thank you very much. We're gonna have a ride. Oh, I know there was a question. I know there was somebody asked a question if the monitor was used as, as a, this kind of modeling light helping me to see in the dark and navigate, but it's not. It's, uh, the monitor is just there today uh, at the Learnster studio, and it's good for me to see the result on the, on the big screen over there, and uh, it helps me give you some good feedback on what's going on, but usually I don't work with a big monitor. I have sometimes the computer connected to the camera through the USB, and sometimes I'll just put the screen at the lowest, so we have a... Um, we have a, uh, a, a nice, uh, we don't have the light influencing the, the shooting. Okay, if you could close your eyes, I'm going to look at my framing and my focus. That's good. Zoom in completely. Get the focus right. Again, this very nice, beautiful makeup and styling. The model is helping a lot. She has experience and it shows. So we have every element in place to do some good photography. I'm gonna check my, I'm at F22, that's a bit, maybe we'll start with the F11. It's a bit uh, too dark, 22 is a bit too, um, uh, the, the, the iris is too close for what we're trying to do. So let's try F11. Um, we're gonna start with that little neon I found in Tokyo and see how that goes. All right, so I'm gonna just check a bit, see how strong it is. It's a wide, soft light. I'm sure we can do something interesting with this. Let's try it. So I'll open the shutter and then we'll go like this. All right, the last part, I'm just gonna try the face and see if we have something good. I like it. I got a weird line there. It looks like it's makeup, but it's actually me with the lighting doing this. But I like the base. I'll do another one just to taste, to, to try. Shut her open. Come and do forehead, face, a bit of side, a bit of the other side, and a bit under for the fill. And I'll do one for the clothing, and I'll see what that does. It's clean, it's simple, it's soft enough. It's a bit dark towards the chin. I could have do I could have done another layer, either like this to uh, try to, to make it more even. But of course, this is bigger than the microflow, so it takes more space, so it's a bit harder to work with. 
just a bit. It still works well. And now let's try the tool I just built. It's much stronger because uh, I'm using it on the Claris. So if we could go to F16, please. Yep, we're ready. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Now we're just testing the basic white lighting with these new tools. All right, the close. Very nice. Now I'm passing in front of her. Sometime it creates an interesting texture. I'll see how it goes. It's, it's good. I want to try another one. Try it a bit differently. I'll try more on the sides. If we could turn off the screen. Thank you. And then, ready, go. Uh, I took some risk here. I should have done only two pass. I did three pass, but let's see. How it goes. Basically, I can get a very clean, it's confirming that I can get a very clean um, light with this. I could definitely do some beauty shots. I would just have to put a bit more tape on the sides to make sure I don't see my source, unless I want to keep that effect. Now let's try the uh, microflow. This one's also quite strong. Uh, the tapes are quite long, so I should have a good protection from, this, from the camera seeing the source. And let's try this. Shutter is open. Okay, F16 again. Let's see what we have. All right, I feel like I have much more control. I feel like this light is much more precise. I'm very interested in exploring it a bit further. This photo is quite dramatic, it's interesting. Let's do another one. I'm gonna check if she's in the frame properly. Close your eyes, please. Thank you, I'm gonna tilt the camera a bit and then refocus. Okay, this is good. You can open your eyes. I see that it, it was a bit darker, this one, than the other one. So I can take my time or open the shutter. My button is here. Okay, sometime I'll turn on the light before I enter the frame just to make sure I'm at the right position. Three, two, one, we go. We'll highlight here on the side and voila. There's um, a way to coordinate your movements. I'm still a bit dark, but I love the, the mood. See, the Kino Flow has a, a different quality to it that's just quite fantastic. Maybe we should open, maybe not all the way to 11, but maybe uh, F10 or something. Uh, no, more than 10. Maybe 13. Yep, F13 should be good. And let's test another one. Three, two, one. Open. Starting from the back, coming towards the front. This is nice. Yeah, I'll go in the neck. And then I'll come in a little highlight on the shoulder here. Maybe I can move around and it will highlight on the side here and then see what it does. It's nice, very clean. I love the way it comes out on the shoulder and her, her cap also coming out very, very nice. I like the shadows also where her hair is extending all the way to her face through the shadows. I think it's very, uh, and you see on the cheek, 
on the cheek that's showing, there's a black shadow there. It looks a bit tigerish. It happens often when I use this light, I make shadows in the face, and it works for me. It's part of my creation, it's part of light painting. This is so what it is, and I, I love it this way. So, great shot. I mean, who would know it's done with light painting this way? It's almost like airbrush. And then we can push this, this, this technique a bit further and, and uh, you know, make it more and more interesting. Now, if we, we I have my, my, my best light now for the face. Now, we could use something in the background to make it more interesting. So I'm going to take some of the tools away here so I can work easily. And then um, with that kind of, with that kind of, um, of light, what can I do in the background that would mix? Well, that's a good question. I was wondering if I should use some purple, some dark purple. I think this is the time to use the dark purple. So I use the cone on a, a big Claris that's 800 lumens. The cone is dark purple, so it eats up a lot of light. Plus, I added a bit of tape inside to even uh, make it a bit darker. So I don't have to go through the settings. I can just turn it on and off, and it's the right power. So now let's do the same kind of lighting, but then add a bit of purple in the background and see if it mixes well together. Three, two, one. Her head is up, so this is very nice for the lighting. I can just make something very moody like this, add a bit of highlights here, here, and I did the neck already, just a touch. I don't need, don't need to do the hair because of her position. And now I'm looking at her going, okay, what kind of movements can I do with this? And what I'm thinking of is starting here to putting the point toward her heart and then doing a swirl around and finishing about the same place. I was a bit shaky there, but it's okay, it's a test. Let's see what it does. Very nice. Did the shakiness disturb anything? No, it didn't. But there is a big, there's still quite a difference between the two, um, uh, the two lights, the power are not the same. So um, I think I'm gonna use this one a bit darker, but I need to connect my purple and my white light. I feel like the background is a bit disconnected to the model. So what I could do is find another light that's purple. I have one here and come and add a bit of purple on her. So I'll keep the white base, then I'll add a bit of purple, some highlights or something so it connects with the background. So it feels, because now I feel a disconnect between the, the two. So I want to hide my source. I'm going to use a big piece of tape. Uh, here to put around the flashlight like this. It's going to help to hide the source from the camera. Sometimes we want to see it, sometimes we don't. It's still strong. So I'm gonna put it on the lower setting when, before I come in and see. And maybe I'll be far away from her. So that, that could be my good, my connector. So keeping my table clean. One, two, three, these tools can move out of the way. Got this one, I got this one. All right, I think we're ready. You can close your, yeah, that's good. I'm gonna focus and frame. All right, the frame is perfect. Focus is good. Turn off this light. Shutter is open. I'm using this. Gotta find my button. These buttons. All right, we're ready. I mean, she's doing the profile, it's great. 
I'm not going to light up everything, just come in, do a nice clean shot like this, and I'll do the rest with the purple. I'll do a little highlight and put some on their clothing, a little highlight there, and then, oh, not in front of the lens. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cone, the cone has to go one level down on the power setting and then, uh, okay, what movement do I want to do? She's over there, so maybe I'll go like this, like this, like that, and like this. Let's see what that does. See if I'm in the right zone. Oops. That's all right. I think now you feel like the background is more connected. It's too dark, but you feel that there is a connection between the colors. So I'm going to do it again. You see a little movement on their ear. Uh, that happens often. It's, it's all right. I feel like we're close. I love the, to see the makeup in the neck like this. It needs a little work, but we're really, really close. So um, I'm not going to readjust the light in the background. I'm going to keep it at full power to have uh, more result. OK, we're ready. We can do about the same, yeah? The same, yeah, that's great. Oh, uh, if you can open the shutter, please. Thank you. Start from the back. Great, nice highlights here, here. And I'm going to bring it on the cheek a bit, on the ear, the neck, then leave it like this. This one, I'm cutting the power half outside the frame, coming like this, like that. A bit of highlight on her should be enough. And then the background, I decided to use it full power. Maybe I'll do a circle instead, a half circle like this. Whoa, the tape is gone. All right, let's uh, close the shutter, please. Put a piece of tape on that one. It's nice. I'm getting close. I feel like I'm getting very close. I love the, the emotion, the expression that's uh, coming out of the picture. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Bear with me. This is the improvised part of light painting, the way it should be. Okay, let's look at this frame. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. If you could close your eyes. I love the mood you're Offering us, it's perfect. Okay, then move this a little bit here. Then zoom. Just 5% zoom out in case. And then I'm preparing my light. We're good. I'll try to open the shutter from here. It's working, and we're good to go. Now I'm going to have a shadow and a highlight in the middle of her face. It could look great or not. Purple, cut the power in half. Come and do some highlights from the sides. And then one thing we could do in this case is I could put the full power and come and do some stuff on the wall. It's dark gray, but still it should be a it should show up. And this. And then, last part. I'm getting more complex. There's more steps. Now we're at four steps. And then, go. We'll do something like this. Oh, 
and then we'll keep it like this. So I added four layers. Interesting. She, the lighting on her is a bit more harsh than I thought, but I still like it. Um, it's nice. The background became nuts. I could add a bit more pink, but it works, but I could add a bit more pink on her forehead to blend it in a bit more. Let's do another one just for fun. I feel like we're getting closer and closer. Very nice. Good, like that. Now, I purp on purpose, I did a highlight and some shadows also. Okay, a little bit more in the face this time and the body. And uh, that worked pretty well before and it was even stronger than I thought. I could use my fingers and create little shadows and more textures like this in front of the light. See what that does. Don't be afraid to use your fingers for all, for, you know, as a creation tool. They're amazing tools to have. I encourage you to eat with your fingers once in a while to get back in touch. <laughs> It's fun and tastes better, as long as they're clean. Thank you, let's look at this. <laughs> Whoa, okay, okay, we got our first real monster today. <laughs> we have to welcome the monsters, so welcome to the workshop. <laughs> Enjoy, <laughs> you're just passing by, you're not staying. Um, it's interesting, the emotion is, is, is good but between the basic white light and when I put the purple on, something happened. I think I forgot to turn down the purple, uh, the, the second, second light I used, so it's at full power, and maybe she moved at the same time a little bit, and then we, we it created this, this way, weird character. It's not so monstrous, it could be worse, but it's, I'm glad we had at least one today. <laughs> Let's do uh, another one, I'll try to fix this. Okay, I'm gonna close your eyes. I'm gonna put the bright light on. Okay, and the tripod a bit. It's nice. There's a very, it's creative and it's um, very colorful. But at the same time, um, we have a lot of elegance in the poses, so it makes an interesting dynamic with the makeup. Agnes is bringing her own personality, her own feelings, her own uh, background into this, and it shows and it, it enriches the picture. So I don't control everything uh, in the shooting. I allow things to happen through other people too. I mean, I think that when we integrate as much as possible of our surrounding, that's when we get every richness available to, to, to create a beautiful uh, result. So shutter is open. We're ready. You're keeping your eyes closed. That's fine. That's good. I'll do a little half circle here. And then I'll do a little under highlight. And then shoulder. This time I'm going to bring down the power on this one. And I'll just do a little bit here here, background. Now, if I go back on the face right now with this light, we might get another monster. We might get a dub, a, like a double face happening. So I don't want to do that. So um, this movement, I'm looking at an expression right now. And uh, I'm seeing maybe more organic texture like this. I'm moving a bit quicker with this tool, so it should help us to keep it dark enough. Let's see what that does. 
I could have did the last. It's interesting. I like it. I like the lighting on her face. I like the spatial quality to it. It's very original. I, I like this shot a lot. I love the details of her hair going back on top of her ears, lights and darks. It's nice. It's a nice picture. We got something good. And let's do a last one just for luck, just for fun. Very nice. Look quickly. If you're in the frame, probably. Yep, you are. Excellent. Let's uh, push the white light a bit more. Start from the back. This. And I'll come and do a little highlight here, keeping some shadow in the face and a little for the chin. Just a little highlight in the back, just a bit. And then this, if I want to go more structural, actually, um, let's just follow the line of the body a bit here. Go in the front, go up, outside the frame, come back, do the same front and outside the frame. And then let's just see if that does a nice background that works with the model works with the shot. Nice, interesting, very theatrical, like very uh, future retro Chinese theatrical. That's what I see when I look at this shot. It's very cool. Even like uh, if things are not perfect, you see these white highlights are just like, I like it. That's, it differentiates uh, that's what makes light painting special, differentiates it from, from Photoshop, where in Photoshop you wouldn't do these highlight lines like this, a bit crooked, a bit more organic. And I, I feel like this is the strength and the beauty of light painting is we can have things that are not mathematical. I love the digital, I love the digital camera, I love the computer, I love everything that's coming out, uh, all the new technologies, but at the same time I feel like working with the hand is important too. And the two together makes this great mix and gives great results. And I think that's what we have to keep going, is keeping the organic and, and mixing the technology with it and, and creating some interesting new worlds. Because the hand is connected to, 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 to the moment, to this. it's the spontaneous side, it's capturing the moment, it's all of us together just going, okay, this is the moment. Usually, like I said yesterday, I work a lot with uh, music and usually the atmosphere is important. Like I have good music, good playlists, uh, decent speakers, and when the the model is there, we are just having this amazing time fl flying through the playlist and creating together. I barely talk on my shootings. I know I've been talking a lot for the last two days. I barely talk on my shootings. Once we're in the zone, like we've been today, it just happens. I just barely talk to models, oh, this is great, oh, that's nice, I like that, okay, just keep this, and just simple directions, and uh, once in a while, I show the model the result. I don't show the model the result at every shot, because sometimes it breaks the flow, sometimes the model goes behind the camera, looks at the shot, goes, sits back, and it kind of breaks the flow. We do that, I do it at the beginning, and once we got a few good shots, then we just flow and work and work and flow and work and work and flow and listen to the music and have fun and create and, and get the energy going. And then we stop, take a break, look at some shots together to talk about it. The model gets some feedback, she sees the result and then she brings new ideas and she gets a boost of energy and gets uh, motivated to, to keep going. So this is amazing shots, um, beautiful lighting. Again, the Kino Flow, it's almost like doing airbrush, you know, and, and, and that's one of my tricks to do beautiful portraits. 
The other trick is to have, and that's when I like the, um, these lights, the Bushnells that are doing squares because I like to have, I want to have more Bushnells and have them come and do some highlights. They project very strongly. They're great for highlights to come and do some highlights on the hair, on the shoulder, on the side of the face. So if I'm putting a purple light in the front, then I'll take a purple light and come and do a highlight with the Bushnell. I'll come and shoot some, some uh, and that's how you connect things together. That's how you connect your background and, and, and all the lights together. You know, it's color matching. Uh, in, in photography and studio, we often do that. We have some lights in the front and we have some right here that's just creating this halo and creating a highlight, cutting the model uh, from the background. And I use that idea in light painting. So if I could have like at least one, two, three, four, five Bushnells and have all the colors, have some nice blues, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, you know, and then for the face, I have all the same tools, same colors, not the same tools, different tools for the face and then for the base and then uh, mat with matching colors, then I can come and do certain lights here then do the highlights that, that matches. I think you get the picture. Um, it would be fun to create with a few more tools. There's the, uh, the, the Fire Ego Breaker tool um, that we should do something with today. It'll be fun. And we should also play with the, the ice lights. I think for, the, um, for this one, I should add a little color to, to my Kino Flow. So maybe I'll try the orange. This I don't need anymore. This will be the background. This I don't need anymore. So this one is really glued there. So let me take the other one. This design. I'll turn it on and then I just put in the orange like this. It's pretty quick. I am not sure how orange is going to do on her face, but we'll find out. I might want to add a touch of white. And this I could do maybe with uh, this tool here. And it's a warm white. It, uh, I use the aluminum. I can bend the aluminum, the foil, I mean, like this, so I have a nice line and I can come and do a, a few highlights on her face just to desaturate the orange. The orange might just be like, oh, she's all orange flat. So we want to bring some volume in with that light. And then I'll use this one we looked at yesterday, and then I'll try to make some fun effects around her like she's in fire. And um, and <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Let me check the uh, exposure. Uh, the aperture we're at 13 should be good. If you close your eyes, this one is more fire orange. Okay, I like the expression. That's great. Focus framing is good. Let's open and then go and play. We're so lucky we get to paint with light. This one is strong. I went really close to the face on this one. If I need a little highlight, maybe just a little bit to get some sparkles going. And then this one, I'll work her body like this. I know this is probably tickling. And I have no idea what that's going to look like. <laughs> a bit, I know a bit what it's going to look like. But let's see. We're pretty good. Um, see, I get a lot of orange. It's very, I like the background. We're close. Um, 
but it's too saturated. That orange is just too saturated. So I should add a bit more white. If I'm not satisfied with this white, I'm going to try another one. If I'm not satisfied with it, then I'll plug in a second Kino Flow and, and try to do some beauty white on top or as a base. OK, I'm going to open. Oh, can't open. Can you open for me? Thank you. So maybe I should start with the whites. OK, three, two, one, we're good to go. Now I'm taking a risk because I'm going to put a second layer in her face. I hope she doesn't move. And that is all clean. With a bit more abstract there. Let's see what it does. I realize I don't have to move that one so quickly because it's not uh, very strong. I could put it on the Claris 800 lumen, but the button is not where I want it. And this one has a very simple button, so I like it. I like to work quicker with this tool because it really moves the legs. Oh, if you can close, please. Thank you. It's nicer. We're getting closer. There is a little movement, but it works. It works. We're, we're getting close to the zone I want to go get into. We're really, we're getting there. Maybe let's try some with the eyes open. And we're going to use that combination of tool. I'm not going to plug in another Kinoflow. I'm just going to keep going with this and try to make it more. I'm going to try to make it work together. Uh, if, OK. Uh, focus is done. Great. Now, if you could open your eyes looking upwards, I know there's no, oh, there's a bit well, of reflection. If you don't focus enough on one spot, what's going to happen? Well, uh, you might have four eyes instead of two. Uh, okay. you, you might move and have, you know, from one layer to another of light, it's going to print differently. So I'm going to open the shutter. Then, oops, can't find my button. Yeah, there it is. Three, two, one. I'm thinking about fire again. It's nice. It's good. A little highlight here. And then I need a bit of white in here. Maybe I'll try more on the cheeks, lips, nose, and not touch the eyes too much, on the ears. Maybe that was a little too much, I'm not sure yet. And then the last time. Trying something also with my hand on top of it. Maybe I should turn it around a bit more. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm outside the frame in theory, <laughs> looking for my button. And then maybe I'll do something more fun where I'm just like going nuts with it without knowing exactly what I'm doing, which I like. Just whoosh. It's getting good. We're improving from one to another. I like her expression. Even the, the, what looks like her earrings, it's that piece she's wearing on her head, are falling there a bit on the side. Makes a beautiful movement. I like how the fire is looking. And it feels like there, the f light of the fire around her is influencing her, her face. It feels like it's lighting up her face, that orange that's on one side. So I feel like we have a good combination here. We have three lights, three layers. I feel like we can push this further and uh, make this better, better, and better. Um, 
But I'm going to stop with these tools since we have, I've, 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 uh, I gave you the base of it. Um, there's maybe a, f a few last tools I want to use to uh, close this session. Um, one would be the stick. Wait, we have uh, the ice stick here with the blue gel. Maybe, do we have a blue light blade? This light blade could work. It's not exactly the same shade, but could work. They could be a good mix. This and that. I think that, yeah, I think that could work. Now I'm wondering, can I do my base with this? Is it strong enough to do, or am I gonna get too much highlight? I feel like it makes nice patterns in the face, but I'm worried that with, when I'm doing some kind of funky patterns on their face, that this is gonna become too strong in the image. It's gonna become very uh, important, too bright. I could use a cardboard. If I had a black cardboard, usually I do on my shootings, I could use a cardboard and hide the source while I'm, I'm playing with this, these patterns that are coming out of the, the light blade. Um, but in this case, maybe I'll just use a small flashlight. I think uh, I want w the one we used earlier is fine. Yeah, this one, this one, they match well. The background has a little bit of a different shade, but let's see what it does. So three tools, one, two, three. Now we're going cold and moody. Yep, she's, she's got it. Just gonna check my focus. Close your eyes, thank you. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Uh, F13. Let's try that. Shutter is open, your eyes are open. We're ready to go. Base lighting, forehead, eyes, chin, mouth, nose, and a little highlight here. It's nice. In the neck, I'd like sometimes to put a bit in the neck. Then, second tool. What do I do with this one? Should I strobe it? We'll try it, see how it goes. I'm not making any story in particular, I'm just improvising right now, testing and checking if they all match together. I know this one is very powerful, but there's a dimmer to it. So I'm gonna dim it down. And then I'm gonna come in and do some very more organic shape, different than the second tool. And then we'll see how it looks. Okay, shut it close. It's amazing, we got a great shot right there. The expression is fantastic, it all works together. Behind it looks like spray paint, very blurry. It's perfect for the background, the mixers pop. And then these fans that are all around her just accentuate and frames her in a very, very cool way. So this is like probably the best way for me to end um, this part of the shooting. It's uh, a pleasure and a surprise to see this. Um, and that's what I like about being spontaneous and being natural and not thinking too much and being free. And it took me a long time to work on that freedom because before I was uh, holding back, I was judging myself, I was criti criticizing myself a lot, so it would stop me in my creativity. Now I just do things and I let it happen. My body, my mind, they know already. I've been doing light painting for a while, so I just learned to trust myself 
and let go and just try stuff and just try and be fascinated and oh I haven't tried this idea let me try this and and see where it takes me and then I get surprises like this and then I'm like wow what a gift you know can't wait to share this with uh, with everybody and put that on the site and on Facebook and and to share that this experience today we're having all together um, like I, I mentioned yesterday the chemistry and I mentioned today the chemistry choosing your model choosing your team working with people that makes you feel uh, comfortable where you feel empowered if you're working with people who are like totally uh, taking too much space and uh, needing a lot of attention or overpowering you or things like that it doesn't work when you're creating you want to feel empowered you want to feel respected and you want this to go both ways with with your team and then you end up doing some creations that are just beautiful fun and everybody wins at the end everybody's like yeah great and they take a piece home and they're 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 uh, it, it, it they're, they they go back with a positive experience so that goes for you too you want to put yourself in situations where you're working some people are the best but there's no chemistry with them just don't don't insist find people who are different and you have chemistry with and you'll have much better results so uh, if you do have any questions let us know on facebook on learnster and um, this will end um, the the shooting part of our day uh, we're going to take a small break and then we're going to go inside the computer and uh, we're going to play with uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, and I'll show you a few, few tricks. I'm not going to do go very deep with it. I'm just going to show you a bit how I work quickly so you get a base of how I change my pictures. But as you witnessed today live, and a lot of people asking me, is this Photoshop? Is this Photoshop? It's like, no, it's not Photoshop. It's done in camera. You've seen the pictures appear in front of your eyes today. These are our real images in camera uh, without any uh, uh, changes to, through the, to the digital uh, technology we have. Um, I want to thank our mo model Agnes for doing such a great job. She's been wonderful, patient, calm. Uh, she brought me a lot of comfort, a lot of uh, openness, so I felt very free around her. And, um, and I think that shows in, in the artwork. And I want to thank you for doing such a great makeup. Um, um, we, we didn't meet, we just talked on the phone. She sent, she, our, our makeup artist sent us a few ideas and I was like, great, this direction, let's go bold and let's make some colors. And uh, the rest was improvised today and we, uh, we ended up doing a beautiful shooting. And I'm glad I could offer this to you and share this with you. Um, I consider this a great success and gift for all of us. And uh, thank you for the Learnster team. You guys are doing a great job supporting me in this. And I know this is a whole new situation with darkness and light and all of this happening at the same time. Thank you for your patience and your understanding. So stay with us. We're going to take a small break. And, um, and then we're going to come back with the computer. Um, the computer uh, post-production post and also I have a fan page on Facebook and you can uh, also follow me on my website patrickroshan.com thank you